gone over this side now. We used to do it over there. <laughs> it's lovely, a pleasure to see you all today. There's quite a lot of faces I haven't met before. So, like Izzy, I'm just going to repeat what I've been saying every week. Um, so, I'm Lucy and I, I lead um, the Norfolk Network. It's a business um, membership um, community and it brings together some very forward thinking um, founders and directors, people working in some very cool startups and small businesses in Norfolk. And we have a common purpose of really wanting to build things, you know, building ourselves, developing ourselves, building our teams and building businesses. And really through the exchange of um, practical knowledge and know-how and also building those relationships, those valuable um, and diverse relationships that you need in, in business. So we're member-led, so what I mean by that is members are very active at getting involved and sharing their knowledge, maybe being keynotes or panel uh, panellists um, and discussing stuff and also connecting each other. So the more active you are in the network, the more connected you are as well. Um, so we run events um, and I'm really, really delighted to be working with um, Norwich Beard, a very forward-thinking um, business um, organisation and also passionate about the vibrancy of Norwich, which I am as well. So Norwich Talks Up Business, it's 20 talks. We started in February and the weather is changing now. We're on talk number 12 um, every Tuesday at, until the end of June and also in the next series we'll be doing two weeks where we go Tuesday and Friday, <laughs> so to fit everything in. Uh, we've got another um, eight talks to go, so it's all very exciting. And today, I'm really just um, delighted that Lauren, I persuaded Lauren to come and talk. Lauren is a, a very key figure um, in the Norwich Lanes community, and she's a real champion um, for independent businesses. Um, for 15 years, you ran the Bird Cage, very cool and creative um, um, part in the heart of, um, um, of the lanes, and now, you run the Garnet, which is my favourite pub. <laughs> it really well is. Well done, yeah. um, <laughs> it is, it is. I love the Garnet. And it's historical and it stands very proudly overlooking, overlooking the uh, marketplace. And what, uh, um, what Lauren's done with that has been amazing, really. And also you've got the Garnet stores, which is, um, I love my little um, pops that I bought from there. So it's lots of really kind of funky, cool um, um, homeware stuff and some very um, lovely wine. Um, also, Lauren is the director of the Crumb Agency, and the Crumb Agency is a casting agency um, um, placing um, models in fashion, beauty, and, um, um, and commercial um, industries. And the, the brands that you work with, it's incredible, you know, global brands, including Adidas, Doc Martens, my favorite, and Vogue and Spotify, so pretty amazing. And, um, the agency has been recognised for establishing the first non-binary division in the modelling industry um, and also works with clients to improve standards um, in terms of um, inclusivity. So, amazing work. Um, Lauren has always been accepting of challenges <laughs> and today her, she's going to be talking about readapting and resilience. So, over to you Lauren. Thank you so much. <laughs> Everyone, I am Lauren Gregory, and the first thing to just say is I'm not a speaker at all, <laughs> and I'm pretty terrified of this, and I'm not qualified really to talk to you about resilience or business, but I'm going to give it a shot, so bear with me while I die for water at regular intervals. Um, but a bit of background about me, and I'll try and keep it brief, but I think it might help give context to some of the things that I've experienced, um, particularly over the last couple of years. I was born in Great Yarmouth, and Yarmouth to me is someone that's very, very special. For me, Yarmouth was always this massive melting pot of different cultures, actually, and um, my mum was an art student in Yarmouth, and I remember seeing lots of cine film footage of the art college at that time, and that kind of... 60s cool art scene and her wearing her Yarmouth oil skins and there was this kind of um, you know incredible kind of atmosphere of creativity but like real proudness of where they sort of came from and um, from Yarmouth I then moved um, by different parts of the world actually to settle in London for a period of time and I was a student in London and there was a pub that we used to make our student union when we were at art college because we didn't have one. 
and it was a pub in Clerkenwell and I remember the smell of it now even. Um, <laughs> there was this incredible Thai kitchen and there was real ale and there was just this buzz of all these amazing people that would kind of end up there at the end of their day. And I just loved the idea of that space being this home for everyone to just get out what had happened for their day, talk about their weeks, meet different people. There was no judgment and it was great fun and it meant a lot to me. And I think that's where I sit with my interest in pubs. And it was from there that I came home to Norwich one weekend to see my parents. And I sat over there um, in sort of the Norwich Lanes area and I sat on this bench and there was this boarded up empty pub um, and in 2005 I took that on and that became the Birdcage which was my first pub and the Birdcage I hope was somewhere that Norwich kind of needed at that time just because I felt it was really bonkers and it was really creative and I hope that there was no judgement there and part of what we aimed to do there was make it very inclusive as a venue and anything kind of went and it was calamitous and you know crazy but it's quite creative and the area around there felt like it was also really creative and I became really actively involved in um, sorting out uh, bits and pieces through the Norwich Lanes and um, organising a, a Summer Lanes Fair that we had yearly and they were great times and from there I then took on the Market Pub which is the Garnet um, which I think was designed completely to be the kind of faithful older sibling of, of the birdcage because that was like this crazy mess <laughs> and then the Garnet was this old faithful that was just standing solid and I don't know how much you might know about that building, but it's very historical. There's um, huge amounts of history steeped within those walls. And, and of course, huge amounts of history steeped within the marketplace. And so you feel like the custodian of something very precious. Um, you know, likewise, <coughs> very determined to make sure it was a very solid venue and a venue that people could be however they wanted to be there and would be welcomed. And, um, you know, there was no judgment on that. And, the idea that you could finish work and go there and, you know, have a few drinks and, and get out, get out your day. Um, and we had a great time. Everything actually was a good laugh for a long period of time. But we then went into Brexit and um, I remember the mood changing quite drastically at that point. It felt for me quite a seismic shift in terms of people's communication with each other. People had become very judgmental with each other and people were very unforgiving all of a sudden and the idea of people coming into the, even the venues became quite um, edgy at times actually. And from there we went into this thing that happened in Wuhan which I think we can all know a bit about and the global pandemic rolled in and for me I had never shut my pubs for more than a Christmas day in 15 years and to suddenly be closing the doors on those and not have any idea about the future was terrifying. It just felt so at odds with anything that I was used to and I personally like people <laughs> and I like being with people so the idea of kind of you know having to spend that time at home, although my home life is lovely, um, you know. <laughs> Wasn't, wasn't what I was used to even remotely and we shut the doors and we'd literally gone from being really, really busy on that Saturday to everyone getting more and more fearful and just watching and these bonkers things I was having to tell like the team like can you stop, we, can you keep wrapping the card machine in plastic and you know and all these things that we were having to kind of you know parachute in these sort of things but you knew the end was sort of coming with it. And of course, then we all know what happened next. There was this huge period of quiet and stillness and these epic venues were suddenly silenced overnight and everyone very, very quickly went very quiet. And um, for me, I found that personally quite horrendous um, because that was at odds with everything that I had learned up to that point um, within those venues and it took me a while to um, get my head around how we were even going to move forward 
and I started an online quiz, as many people did, um, for the Birdcage Instagram account because I was really keen to make people have that Friday night feeling and that was quite fun. And I did that with other fellow businesses who were having a bit of a rough trot at that time. And even to see their faces like this on a screen was, was lovely. And, um, and people have been in touch since saying that that sort of really helped them. Um, and I started to rethink how we were going to move forward. So like many businesses within the hospitality industry, we were tasked with furloughing you know, you know, our whole team. And um, there was ways of kind of being able to try and you know, get them involved in like, um, you know, ideas. You know, so we would try and like, catch up with each other and see what, you know, where, where people's heads were at moving forward. And, um, one thing we decided to do was uh, start selling the booze, you know, outside the pubs. So we set up the off licence and I don't know how many of you have been to the Garnet, but it's probably the worst building to deal with a pandemic you could ever be given because every room is on a different floor. So when we opened, there was this metre distancing of tables and, you know, I don't think we've all kind of pretended this has not happened because it's all so weird looking back on it but effectively that rendered us with an empty pub because we couldn't put tables close to anyone there was no space to put tables anywhere so we decided that the ones that were in the main bar area we would take out and we would put shelving in and we would stock that with local suppliers and with alcohol to take away and I love that challenge because it gave me an opportunity to speak to other local suppliers and come out of my shell that I'd sort of been hiding under and, um, and see how they were doing. And we were very lucky because people supported us with that. And um, I remember doing, at the least, being very kind about them, these very embarrassing Instagram videos of like talking about this on, you know, and going around the pub and showing people what was going on. And, you know, we were, we were lucky because it gave us an opportunity to get out there and see people again. And you'd go to deliver some sort of drinks around someone's on a Friday night and put it on the door and wave at them through the window. And, and they were so happy to see you. It was lovely. <laughs> um, and from that, we ended up taking the empty shop that was next to the Garnet. And um, we decided to diversify um, our stock and we ended up involving, you know, more local craftspeople and more homewares and bits and pieces like that. Um, but on the other side of that, when we reopened the doors of the birdcage, um, people didn't really want us back at that moment in time. It was a very, very different atmosphere. People, there was a real fear that had kind of um, sort of taken over, you know, venues of that nature at that moment in time. So whilst the old faithful there was sort of, you know, carrying on, it, felt to me like a door was closing with that pub and it coincided with the end of my lease there so I had to make the kind of really difficult decision to shut the doors on that um, and I look back on that and think would I still be going probably would probably still plowing on with the pub you know it if the pandemic hadn't happened but that said everything happens for a reason right and I think it actually offered me an opportunity to rethink and think where we wanted to move forward. And although I think now we're in this summer where it was going to work to pay rent on a building to get to this point, well, that's so good. So I was, I was lucky actually in many ways that I had that decision to be able to close the doors. Although by no stretch of the imagination that's not how I would want it to have closed those doors. And there's something quite precious about keeping it in a past that I feel like has gone now. And I quite like looking back on those memories rather than trying to forge it through. Um, but going back to the idea of resilience and something that I thought I'd share with you, if it's of any remote interest at all, it was because I'd gone to a lecture about human resilience. So obviously business resilience is very different to that. And it talks about this chance of happiness, and some of you all already know about this, but it's about this idea that, you know, we've got the red, and then we've got the green, and we've got the amber, and how we should all try and aim to sit in the amber. Because obviously in the green, the only way is down. And in the red, that's sort of like, you know, a really rubbish place to be, isn't it? And I kept remembering this, and I kept remembering and thinking about what was going on at that point. And I thought, I wonder if, actually within my businesses at the moment, I should be aiming for amber because I've definitely been pushing myself always to get to green. But looking back, is that a great place? Because 
Red, I feel like in business you're reacting, you're firefighting. It's kind of that, you know, crunch patch. And green is that patch where everything's really great, but whew, the only way is down, isn't it? So I started to really reevaluate what I wanted to do and moving forward, just take a bit of time to try some different ideas and maybe fail some different ideas, but also do it for like, the right reasons and so when we reopened the garnet again and we reopened the garnet shop I feel like our energy was in a good place actually and our team were in a good place because we felt like come on we'll just give it a go let's just go which is so at odds with how you'd run things prior to the pandemic um, and of course with that we've had the joy of substantial meals and the gorgeous Christmas that was that we will all try and forget but on the whole, I think one of the sort of biggest lessons that I learned was to kind of accept that moment of failure and, um, and to kind of just keep going and to keep aiming for just getting through. And at the moment, facing uh, the challenges that we face ahead, because by no stretch of the imagination are we through anything at the moment, um, I feel actually at peace just being number. I'm like, if we can get there, we're all good. Um, so that's kind of how my journey is, is continuing like that. And I guess what the, the thing that I want to most of all say today, and the reason that I got talked into being here, um, <laughs> is because for me, I feel so passionate about Norwich, and I feel so passionate about our community here, but I don't want anyone to forget how awful it has been for so many people, you know, not saying myself, but for lots of people. And I feel like, myself included, I went on a real journey with that period of time. And I feel like I've got back into being a bit, you know, convenience again over, over Seoul. And actually going to visit the local venues and supporting the local businesses and remembering um, the local community that we have here and engaging with them is more important now than ever because I feel like it's very easy to slip into old ways of where we were before that. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, don't, don't forget that journey that we've all been on. changing um, and um, but I like to hold on to a hope be it naively that people still need each other and I think um, one thing that I was so appreciative of was when we opened the doors with the garnet people were having to drink under some really rubbish circumstances you were like oh can you enjoy being outside in the pouring rain <laughs> lovely and they're just looking at like this lovely venue all warm and cozy like nope and there you go. <laughs> and people were so happy to be able to just experience that time with their friends and their family again. It really reinstilled my faith in the necessity to always have places where people can be with each other in real life. Um, so whilst, I guess, am I going to stand here and say, oh, the, the, the end of Topshop is really sad. It will be sad for a lot of people. But do I think that that's necessary? I don't know if I do think that's necessary. I think that, you know, we've got an opportunity now to see uh, growth in other areas and we can see our high streets change. And is the, is the horror of, you know, um, change stores, is that, is that sort of how I see my city moving forward? I don't think I do anyway. So I'm, I'm personally okay with that, you know, but I do think there's huge amounts to be said for the marketplace and for, you know, the, 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 the sort of history of you know those local businesses and um, and what they bring to bring to the, the city. What how do you see yourself in the next you know two or three years then? I don't think I can see no. myself in the next two or three years. Um, how do I see? I think the festival has been you know wonderful to see this weekend. 
see that life coming back into the city again, and that you know, um, yeah, you know, and I think won't it be nice if we all had a good summer? I mean, I'm thinking about life like that now. <laughs> I used to have my wall charts and placing events and everything else, and now I'm sort of thinking, oh, lovely, lovely if we have a good weekend. <laughs> um, you know, so, yeah, uh, what will be will be, but I, I, I think we have got still plenty of challenges ahead, and actually, as I was saying earlier on, it's easy, like... Uh, if you'd have asked me this like about a year ago, I think I'd have been in that blind optimism. Oh, it's all going to be fine, love, you know, and now I think it's actually a good time to do this talk because I feel like I'm, I'm at more peace with the fact that it might not be, actually. Um, but it's, you know, it's okay. We will get, we'll get through it together. <laughs> Just from my perspective, would, would it be correct in saying you, you're quite, you've kind of got through this journey from being quite, connected to the gut instinct rather than overthinking. Sure. So yeah. you kind of like because you mentioned about, you know, sure. Things happen for a reason. So you, you, you seem quite um, I guess connected from within rather than for from sure the conscious and, level. And I think doing things that you actually care about will yeah. keep you going. So I think my connection to that building, as much as it annoys me so much <laughs> at times, we you know it's quirks. It's got this incredible wisdom to it. It's like lived through world wars and it's kind of just sitting there around you just being like, come on, uh, what's the worst that's going to happen? And, and actually dealing with the suppliers that we've been dealing with recently, it's just so energising to sort of see, um, you know, the, the effort that they put into what, the, you know, what they're doing and, and the care. And so I think it becomes quite instinctive to really want to kind of go forward with that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. My, my partner and his friend meet every time there's an orange game at the Garnet. So. Oh, no! <laughs> yes. Yes. You don't have to say that. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I guess um, there was a necessity to feel like I've got to do something. So there was very much that. I've got to do something. And I wanted to do something that involved other people because I wanted to speak to people. <laughs> and I wanted there to be someone who was a person at the end of an email who wasn't like a sort of sales at so you know what I mean I kind of wanted to have that you know one-to-one -one communication um, and also because I'd always dabbled with the idea of that I always knew that we had this historical off-license part of our license and we never done anything with that so it was a bit of a time of going hang on why don't we start trying something a bit new that's not too stressful oh and sure let's be honest to begin with there was a lot of booze I had to get rid of I mean <laughs> I did a good innings of drinking a lot of it but you know when we closed the door I was like oh my god look at this amount of stuff that we're suddenly left with so um yeah to begin with for sure yeah there was a bit of that um you talked about the kind of I suppose and this is interesting because it was in the last talk wasn't it? Robert Jones talked about the idea of tolerance and kind of how he felt that that had changed in the last few years. Mm. Now that kind of people have come back to the pubs, do you still see, I suppose, that, do you see a different spirit prevailing, kind of people coming in and drinking? Way! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we are noticing people have um, got back to um, expecting everything to be fine a lot. When we first reopened, everyone was so giving and so kind. Um, and actually, you know, I do think there's a lot to be said for being forgiving of people at the moment, particularly in hospitality, because I think that the journey they've gone on is actually bonkers, because to have that amount of time off and then be put back and then take back and then, you know, it's, we had a really busy weekend this weekend, and for our team it was quite a like, edgy moment, because that's two years. You know, we used to do that a lot, but suddenly it's like when those big things happen in the city, we you know, and we've got queues at the door and stuff, it was, it was a big thing for them to kind of like process because they were so out of touch with how that, you know, how that is. And I think, um, you know, it would be a shame to lose that, um, that feeling of togetherness that we had at one point because I felt like that was what kind of got us through that really awful Christmas 
where people were sitting there with soggy pizzas. And I mean, it couldn't have been more tragic, but people put a smile on their face and they thought it was quite funny. And that kind of really uh, made our team kind of like go, oh, thank God, you're being nice to us. Because it was a miserable experience to have to work under those circumstances, really miserable. And I think people are finding their feet again now. And I think this is the year where people will get back into the swing of things, but it, we're still at that turning point at the moment. Question right at the back door too. Would you like? Um, I was, I was wondering how long you think it's going to take the industry generally to recover. Yeah. I know that's a really hard question to answer, yeah. and you can't speak for everybody. No. Um, yeah, you've been quite fortunate that you were able to get out of these at a good time. Exactly, and people who are stuck kind of with that. Yeah, I think it's interesting because what you're seeing happen at the moment. I'm speaking to a friend of mine who runs a, a, a nightclub. And he was saying that what's happening at the moment is he doesn't know what to do because the ticket surge comes in right at the last minute. So whereas in days gone by, people would pre-plan, no one wants to pre-plan anything at the moment. So what ends up happening is they're sort of like, oh, it's going to be a massive flop. And then actually at the last minute, everyone suddenly you know, piles on in there. Um, will it ever recover um, to what we knew it was? I don't know if it will actually but what I do think Norwich is very good for is supporting people and wanting to see businesses work and I think that um, there, there is there is place for that um, you know and actually uh, you know different offerings and people doing different things I think that's that's the key to it do I think that the the years of that you know when you know you know when there's loads of restaurants wasn't there and there's loads of bars and it suddenly just got you know a bit crazy like that didn't it and actually um, will it go back to that? Maybe not, but is that a bad, I don't, I don't know, you know, but for, for, for people who are in it at the moment stuck having to pay rent on, um, you know, oh, I, I mean, it's the, it's the support of the landlords is really, and the support of um, the government and for them to not forget where we're at with that is key, is key to keeping that going because what a tremendous shame if we lose some of the, um, you know, the wonderful businesses we have here because they end up being you know you can only go so far can't you mm. i'm aware i'm only going to go so far with it if we're sort of carrying on like this for years my amber will start getting quite red <laughs> you, know, <and laughs> you know but yeah fingers crossed i think that's why it's really important to keep talking about because i feel like people have just kind of gone oh done now yeah. bye you know um so yeah i get that for sure yeah, so what is my involvement with the lanes? I have started to poke my nose into the market. <laughs> so I've, I've appeared like round there now, kind of like going, um, but uh, John T, who is a good, great friend of mine, is um, still very, you know, uh, active with the lanes and they're going ahead with the summer fair this year. And I am obviously always a, a support and, you know, massive, you know, fan of the lanes. Geographically, it makes sense for me to support what's going on this end more now. Um, but that's not to say that I don't know everything that's going on around there. Um, so you know, I still love the lanes and and the the you know the fact of having that independent area of Norwich is is so wow, isn't it? I mean, how cool is that? Like you know, keep keep going to the lanes for sure. Um, that's a good point to, to finish, I think, and um, you're so modest, I'm, I'm so pleased you did this job, oh. this uh, talk, and I think, I think you've enjoyed it, I think you've enjoyed it. Oh, I've loved it. <laughs> <laughs>